Hello, Eagles everywhere on Friday and starting Friday and then throughout on the Eagles YouTube channel, a presentation from Eagles Entertainment is called Goal to Go, John Dornbos. It is an unbelievable story, and I know that you are going to want to watch it. And if there is ever somebody who can relate to what we're going through right now in the sense of being knocked down and getting back up, it's my guest today, John Dornbos. Johnny D, how are you doing? I guess in Las Vegas, going through this global pandemic. You know, uh, well, so Vegas shut down. Uh, you know, we, we have a place in Huntington Beach, California, so we're out here now. But it's crazy. To, yeah, it's crazy to think that. I mean, you look at Times Square, you look at the Vegas Strip. There's nobody there. Shut down. Live entertainment completely shut down. So, look, it is what it is, right? This is our reality. There's bad things happening. I got a pre-existing condition, so my wife and I, we pretty much. I haven't left the house, um, but I'm going to make the best of it, and I'm actually enjoying the, the the concept and idea of not feeling a responsibility to be anywhere anywhere or do anything. So. Like I said, I'm going to make the best of this. I got to see my daughter's first steps. I got to hear her first words. Uh, she's going to be one. She's already a year old this month. So uh, it is what it is, and we're making the best of it. Man, that time really did fly by quickly. Wow. Uh, John, it's really remarkable. I look at the, the ledger, 14 years in the NFL, 11 with the Eagles, uh, the most games played by any player consecutively. You and Harold Carmichael share that record. Uh, look at this record. How about this? 23 tackles, 20 unassisted tackles in your 11 seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, two Pro Bowls. Let's start with the tackles because everybody just looked at you as a player and your snaps. Uh, let's start. How did you make so many tackles? How did you get down the field? What's the key for a long snapper getting down the field and getting in on the tackle? Well, so early in my career, you know, I come out of college and I wanted to be a linebacker, right? I thought I was a linebacker. I thought I was big and bad. So I'd run down there and, and make a few plays. And then you realize that the more plays you make, then all of a sudden you got a bounty on you, right? Now, all of a sudden people are coming after you. You're getting blocked. You're getting hit. And then the game changed it. But believe it or not, over my 14-year career, the game and the philosophy and the responsibilities changed. And so now all of a sudden coaches are like, hey, Dornboss, can you fall back and be a safety? <laughs> Yeah, I'm in. Because really, if you think about it, the, the less tackles you make, the less threat you are perceived to be downfield, the less likely you're going to encounter physical, uh, like getting hit. But you're really not. You're still a threat. You're in a safety position. And, you're, and, and my job, uh, especially in, in the later part of my career, was to try and run down the field and get right over the guy that's about to catch the ball. Because he's looking up. The idea was that he would see my green helmet and not have a uh, an idea of how far away I was and just get him to take one or two steps left and right and buy the guards, the tackles, the ends and, and the gunners time to go make a play. Love it. Uh, John, this story uh, that is airing on the Eagles YouTube channel starting on Friday an Eagles entertainment production. It's a remarkable story that talks about your incredible life and getting back up when you're knocked down uh, from the death of your mother uh, through your NFL career certainly wasn't an easy path. Even setting the record for most consecutive games played, you, you get there, you tie Harold Carmichael, and you get hurt in that game. What is the secret to being able to overcome adversity, John? I, I got a few, and, I, and I've had time to think about this, and, and it's funny, a lot of people have asked. It's resiliency and heart. You have those two combined, you're unstoppable. So what does that mean? It means you show up every day ready to work on time, prepared, and have fun doing it. Enjoy the people, enjoy the company, enjoy the road. You know, one of my goals when I was an Eagle and, and in my career when they asked me, what's your goal? I wanted to be the oldest guy on the team. And if I was the oldest guy on the team, it means I showed up every day on time and ready to work. And what I found is that if you just show up and give yourself an opportunity, people are going to jump off the boat. And next thing you know, you're the last man standing. I love that, John. Um, John, let's talk about your career with the Philadelphia Eagles. What, what do you remember? What is the John Dornbos Eagles man cave like? G give us a little glimpse into your, into your memories that you cherish as a Philadelphia Eagle. Everything. It was family. It was friendships. And, and I'm not just saying this because this is your podcast, but you know the friendship that you and I had over the years and, and the amount of times that we BSed in the hallways or on bus rides or just uh, you know, you, you talk to all the old, old timers and, and you, hey, what do you miss? They always say the guys in the locker room. And, and it really is that it's it's going to the cafeteria. It's it's uh, yeah, and OK, so that's on the personal side. You know what else I really enjoyed that I took away from the game was learning a discipline, learning a respect uh, for other people, learning how to push myself and how to persevere, learning how to prepare, do kind of do your due diligence and and learning 
how to work so hard and fail and come back and realizing that fa failure is okay. Failure is going to happen. It's how do we deal with that and how do we overcome that and how do we persevere from that? So, you know, to, to, to give you one or two memories in Philadelphia, it's impossible because it was an 11 year dream come true that I enjoyed every day. John, there were also times, and a lot of times, where you really bonded with Eagles fans, whether you were jumping into the stands, which we show in this goal to go, or performing magic tricks for the fans, or literally during open practices, just throwing a football into the stands that some child caught and cherishes to this day. Why was that so important to you? So when I was 12 years old, I would go see the Seattle Mariners play. And it was Ken Griffey Jr. and Jay Buhner, Omar Vizquel and Edgar Martinez. And I'd sit up in the upper deck and I'd have my glove and I was convinced it was the game that they were going to pick me to go play catch with them. Like I was guaranteed. Right. So when I got out of the league, that question was asked, John, what do you miss? And you actually just asked it. And I really thought about it. And I went back through all these pictures and I found pictures of me playing catch with kids. And guess what? I think the one thing I miss the most is what I consider playing catch with my 12 year old self, my 13 year old self. And it's what you just said. It's in pregame, picking a kid out and playing catch. It's, uh, it's, it's sharing the NFL with the people that don't get to live it. You know, I, I would see a family that would be wearing jerseys and, and all the time, Dom would get a call. Hey, Dom, it's Dornboss. Hey, you know, I got some friends. Can I take them on the 50-yard line and, and uh, you know, take a picture? And yeah, no, no problem. So he'd call ahead. And I would just bring these fans to the field and, and to watch them just light up on a Tuesday night when the stadium was empty and get a picture with their kids. Um, I think that right there is also what kept this game so special and so much fun is, is these were humbling things that made me think about when I was a kid, just dreaming of playing on the big stage. And so I, I miss that. I, I miss pulling kids out. I miss them looking at me, wanting to be where I am at that moment and just uh, playing catch with them and, and telling them that, hey, you can do whatever you want if you just put your mind to it. Why were you so good as a long snapper? What is the key in that position People say, oh, gosh, I don't even, who's the long snapper? The only time you notice a long snapper is when a mistake is made. You didn't make mistakes. Well, I, I, I actually have never been more insulted by a question in my entire career. It's clearly obvious it's due to my physical statue and uh -huh. my, uh, my, my sheer uh, over-dominance of physical attributes. Uh, you know what it is? I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't put too much pressure on myself. I played football because I loved it. And, and when the offseason came, I went home and did magic, and I completely separated myself from the game. And when it was go time, I was always ready. But I never looked at football as my only way to make money, my only career, my only thing in my life that I care about. Football was something I loved, and football was something that I enjoyed doing. And so, therefore, showing up to practice and all that was always fun for me because I just, I just wanted to be there. John, uh, 2017, very tough time for you. Eagles trade you to the Saints, um, and then you're, you've, you're down in New Orleans, and they find a life-saving uh, medical emergency with the uh, aneurysm in your heart. Can you talk about overcoming the disappointment of it not working out in Philly to being in an emergency room with your life on the line? First of all, let's, uh, let's go ahead and give a shout-out to the Zipper Club, baby. You know what I'm saying? Let's give a yeah. shout-out to those guys. Um, yeah, so, so you know, uh, Coach Pippett came to me and said, hey, we're, we're probably going to go younger. I said, okay, you guys are going to do what you got to do. And then, you know, Howie Roseman came to me at practice and said, hey, we're, we're going to trade you. And I think he was expecting me to kind of be angry. And, you know, the reality is, and this is my whole life, whether you agree or not, whether you want something to happen or not, it is what it is. And the sooner you can come to terms with your own reality, the sooner you can find the positive. So I instantly just stepped back and I looked at Howie. And I said, did you just say you're going to trade me? And he goes, yeah. Has there ever been a long snapper traded for? And he kind of looked at me like, um, actually, you know what, John? I don't think there ever has been. I go, Howie, what are they offering? Well, a, a draft pick. A draft pick? I wasn't even drafted coming out of college. So you're telling me at 37 years old, I'm worth more now than I was then? Hey, let this thing rock, man. I want what's best for you and I want what's best for me. So you know, whatever we got to do, let's do it. And, and let's shake hands and tell each other, thank you. So uh, I, I packed my bags. I headed for New Orleans. And when I got there, I played in a preseason game. You know, for me, it was also a, a moment of reflection on, on just my career. But then in the same moment, it was also this idea that, hey, I got to reprove myself. And so I was actually excited 
to go to a new locker room and have to reprove who I was as a player and as an individual. And it kind of gave me a, an energy and a, and a love for football that uh, was kind of just like a spark, right? Uh, so I get down there and then uh, I play in a preseason game. The doctors get back in town. I take my physical three breaths on the stethoscope and they hear a, a murmur, which is like a, a leakage of blood, if you will. They say, hey, we're going to send you down and get, a, get a, uh, uh, some heart tests. I get it done. And the next thing you know, I just signed a three-year extension for more money than I'd ever made. I was super excited. My wife and I were just about to get this penthouse in the city. We'd never lived in a big city, so we're going to go live downtown. And uh, they say, you're never playing football ever again, and you're going to be in emergency open heart surgery within the next probably 48 hours. So let's do what we got to do, and, and here's the condition you have, and here's what this means. And I was like, holy, like, first of all, like, whoa, whoa. Because I felt invincible, right? I felt, you know. I was 37 playing, playing in a young man's game. And like, I'm a pro athlete. Like, what are you talking about? There can't be anything wrong with me. You feel invincible. So uh, I was super fortunate. And, and I'll say thank you to a lot of people. Um, coach Quinn, New York Giants, man, special teams coach, sent me a text that almost brought me to tears. Uh, I thought he never liked me. To be honest with you, I just thought the guy didn't like me. And he sent me a text that said, hey, man, as a competitor, we're going to miss you. I love playing against you. I always knew we'd have to bring it. Uh, hey, by the way, if it was one of our guys, here's the surgeon we'd send him to. Let me know. I got texts from from soccer teams, from Australia, from Canada, from uh, from Europe, uh, basketball teams, baseball teams. And it was just everybody saying, hey, if, if it was our guy, here's where we'd send him. So we called all these surgeons. Every one of them was taught by Dr. Bavaria at University of Penn in Philadelphia. Um, so I am uh, I am forever grateful uh, that I got a call from from Mr. Lurie and he said, hey, look, this is very, very unfortunate but wherever you need to go, the jet's on the runway and you go wherever you have to, to save your life. And so uh, I was hoping we'd be going to Europe or the Bahamas or somewhere really, really cool to take a jet ride. But I go, Jeff, I, I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm very, very thankful, but uh, it's going to be a quick flight, man. I'm coming back to Philly. So, you know, uh, I wish I could take your jet somewhere else. So we ended up going back to Philly. Uh, the surgery was 11 hours um, and I had a, a, a valve replaced and an aortic aneurysm that was the size of a Coke can. So, the vein that was supposed to be about the size of a dime or a nickel was the size of a soda can. That thing pops, it's lights out. So uh, we had the surgery. It went well. Uh, we had some complications post-surgery. We had some hematomas, some white blood cell issues. So my wife and I were actually in the hospital for 30 days post-surgery, which is a pretty long time. Uh, and then sure enough, hey, man, I'm alive and uh, we're rocking and rolling and I, I feel great. You know, I, I wish I lost about 20 pounds, but other than that, it's a great day to be alive. Well, look, this is why everybody needs to watch John Dornbos Goal to Go because it's it's just an uplifting, inspiring story of somebody who doesn't take no for an answer and doesn't let life's obstacles get in his way. John Dornbos, you are an inspiration to everybody, and I truly mean that uh, from uh, being a friend and also somebody who just can step back and say, this guy is an amazing story. Thanks, man. And, and I'm really excited to do this, too. After you guys air that special, I'm going to jump on the Instagram for the Eagles Instagram for a Q&A. So if you have questions, a lot of people bought my book. Uh, I'm very, very thankful for that. If you want to jump on the Eagles Instagram right after this airs, we're going to do a Q&A uh, and I'll, I'll answer whatever you got. Friday, Eagles YouTube channel. Goal to go, John Dornboss, a living legend. John, love you. And thanks for being an inspiration to all of us. Hey, man, I love you, Dave. I'll do anything for you.